All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Air Power. We got an exciting one today here. Today I have a, a box to unbox. These are this is two katanas. Um, these are from RBA katanas. I'll put a link in the description below. One of these are a cloud hammer, another cloud hammer, different type of steel. And one of these are. Uh, I don't think I can pronounce this right. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. Liu Sword. I don't really know. I'll put the word up here on the screen for you. And you can pronounce it however you want to. Um, we're probably going to only go over one of these after the unboxing. Then I'll make another video going over the other one. I'll decide which one I'm going to go over after I open it. So let's get into this. John sent me both of these. Now if you guys want to go to RBA Katana, some swords on his website are not on his website. You can get in touch with him through Instagram Messenger or Facebook or you can just go to RBA Katana's and uh, send him a message there and see what he has. He has some that are on clearance that are, like I said, are not on stock. I believe he told me he had four more of these light, Leo, light, I can't pronounce the word. And uh, I believe they were 250, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Like I said, contact him if you want, see what he's got. They also have some more of these cloud hammers. There's the older versions before they got feedback on them. May have a little rough edges on the Subas and so forth. But they are discounted, I think, if he has any left. Uh, I think they're $50 off with the, uh, the code, the promotion code. But you guys can go check them out. Go talk to him. See what he's got. This is probably not going to be in your typical styrofoam box because he put two of them in here. I just didn't cut the end and slide it out. Oh, it has some styrofoam in here. It's taped up really good. So we use the uh, Kershaw Blur to open this. I might want to keep that because there's tape still all over here. Protective cardboard protecting it. And there is the lovely styrofoam. Got that there for now. Let's see which one we got here first. Okay, first katana. Um, I don't know what this fabric is. It's really thick and stiff. This is a really, really nice looking sword bag. It just got stuck to the tape. That's a really nice looking sword bag. Wonder which katana is in here. I kind of like this sword bag. Ah, that is the Lu, Luin sword or Lu. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that is a nice, that is a nice sword bag. I believe I'll hold on to this one. All right, all right. That side is beautiful. I don't know if that is a painted on a horn. I can't tell. Actually, there's no ledges. Or if that's a real horn. 
the side is very beautiful. It has some beautiful orange, kind of deep red tint to it. Nice presentation out on the Segeo. That's shit of the maze in here. It seemed to be not glued in. <clears throat> Let's take this plastic off of here. Looks like there is a bamboo theme on all the fittings, including the Manuki. So the Kasher has a nice looking, I'm sure that is cast, bamboo theme. There, there are no shit to make on the uh, Kasher. On the Kasher here, it has a ledge, a ledge on both ends, which is not going to bother me. It bothers some people. Oh, that handle is really, really thin. There's not much to hold on to there. I mean, there's a handle, but it's really thin. But all in all, it's nice. Has a blonde Ito with a, like a gold tint. They're fairly tight. I can move them some. The black Samagaya with the bamboo Manuki in it. The knot is a little loose. You can move it around some. Yeah, these these are a little loose. It's not the horriblest I've seen. Okay. The Fuji has just a little edge on it. It's not as bad as this Kosher here. This Kosher's ledges are really bad here. I would have loved for the handle to be a little thicker. Fuji has the bamboo theme on it. As does the uh, Suba. The Suba it has copper sepa on it. I don't know if this is made out of uh, iron or some kind of brass or what the uh, Suba is made of. Take a look at the blade in a second. It has horn on the Koriguchi. It's a wrap, not a full cover. But all in all, it's a nicely done Koriguchi. Lovely colored Saya. I love that Saya. Alright. Let's look at the Habaki. It has like a hammered pattern on it. Regular, uh, I mean, a different than your regular looking um, habakis, which is nice to see. Something different than just a regular brass habaki on there. It has the gold step on top as well. The uh, Suba carries a bamboo theme all around. Blade has a taper, it's there towards the uh, Kasaki here. There's a regular hormone pattern in it. But the blade is a 1095 Damascus. If you can see the beauty in the blade folded blade. I don't know if you want to call it Damascus or not. Just your regular old tip.
I'm not seeing I'm not seeing really any waves. Maybe slightly slight bit of waves in the blade, not really noticeable. That folding pattern looks really nice. Let me see if I can get, get it a little better on camera. I don't know if you can. Alright, this is nice enough. It's my first 1095, but it is folded. It feels very, it handles very, very good. It feels really light. <clears throat> There's your point of balance. I mean, all in all, even with the thin handle on it, it feels feels very wieldable. Feels like it's the lightest katana I have so far. Very wieldable. <clears throat> Two Makugi pigs. Black San Miguel. I think I mentioned it, I'm not sure. The diamonds are all in all fair. Not perfect. Yeah, it's it was well worth uh 250 is what I gave for this one. Looks like it has a little pretty good even grind on the uh you guys gotta forgive me, I can't remember, I keep forgetting most of the names. The tip here. Oh, oh, you do you want to see how sharp it is? I kind of want to see how sharp it is. Will she cut? Oh yeah, it'll cut. That's pretty sharp. All right. Well, there's the sword from. RV, RVA Katana it is a Lyle, Lyle Sword, Lyle, I, like I said, I'll put the name up because I can't pronounce that thing. And uh, we'll have to start building another uh, Katana rack here. Now it's just one solid tube. It doesn't have a distal taper on it. But you can't expect much for around a $250, $260 katana. But it's, it's very good quality and very nice from what I can tell for that price point. As I did mention, I wish they would have made a little bit more beef for your handle. And uh, maybe some more thicker Edo or got something away from this edge here. This Kashra. I don't think that's going to bother me because my hands are so rough they're probably going to end up if I use this much because I really hate to keep using all my swords and uh, diminish the polish and the uh, quality of the blade but you know me I'm probably going to have to at least cut with it once alright let's set this aside Box number two. Uh, all right, this is looking like another one of those cheap K 
kind of the almost, almost silky filling bags. There's like a stain on this bag. But these bags here like this, really thin, cheap bag. Uh, I'll be using for rags or whatever. I'm giving that one bag that I have this one good, pretty good quality bag here that the, well, I think my, uh, I don't remember which katana came with this one. Anyway, this one's going to Mark Bostic. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get out and get it to me. So here is the Cloud Hammer. This is this is the uh, 51 CRV4 German steel blade. And the uh, Saya here is black. I'm not noticing a I'm not noticing a taper if it is a taper it's very slight but it visually looks like it has a very slight taper I can't tell this black has some kind of orange peel overspray on it if it's showing up in the camera for you guys I'm not seeing any kind of horn on it at all. Has a really nice thick green Segeo presentation nut. This one has shit of May that are not glued in also. <clears throat> There's that white threading on the end of those that I just do not prefer. Rather they match the Segeos. <clears throat> or I'd rather they all just be uh, black thread on the end of these the gales. But I think it would look better if they matched the uh, Segeo itself. Now that is not falling out of there. That is that is in there. I gotta give this thing a real good push to get it out. Okay. Okay, the Koi Gucci it's done nicely. It's really nicely done. And it has a horn wrap on it by the looks of that. Maybe I got it all up in your face. This, uh, man. This side is really, really light. Okay, set that to the side. Get to the blade which is very dirty. Now this blade is like I mentioned, these are one of their older first generation 51 CRV4 steels. Well, after they sent them out for reviews and learned that uh, some of the things they needed to do on it. This one has no ledge on the back of the Kashra. The front has just a slight edge. Nicely done uh, basket weave fitting. I'm sure it's cast. And they, they, they're they really famous for this 70s and 80s leather jacket wrapping Edo, which is, which is tight. It's not as tight as the other cloud hammer I have, the SX 105 steel. This one you can move around the knots slightly, but it is tight. It is really tight. And uh, one Makugi Pig. White San Miguel. The nodules at the end are small, and they gradually get to medium nodules. On this end, anyway. The other side, the nodules on the San Miguel are about even. It has some kind of wheat or flour kind of manuki in there. And I really don't know what you would call this suba here. But I got to pick there was I think 12 or 13 different types with 
different Subas. And I picked this one because it did not have the Bohe. The uh, Fuji has the basket weave on it as well. The Copper sop, uh, Seppa. The regular Brass Hibaki. Now the blade does not have any kind of the blade does not have any kind of hormone on it. This is a 51 CRV4 German spring steel. I think it is through hardened. And uh Very high mirror polish. There are no waves whatsoever in that blade. It was honed out and, poly and uh, flattened out very good. I was only going to go over one of these, but you know, guys, I'm, I'm excited. This one is not quite as sharp as the uh, Lua, Lua sword, or however you pronounce that. This may have a, I don't know what they call the edge, Nukai edge or whatever edge where it kind of flares out wider on the edge to give it more durability for cutting harder targets. Right down below, where is it? Right down in this area blade looks a little rough like it might have hit something or it's not bad it's just a little scratched up or whatever there where is it right in that area there I got discounted on this blade like I mentioned I got fifty dollars off with the promotion code <clears throat> so it was a $350 sword I got for $300 and we'll fix that edge up so it will slice right through this like butter because uh, right now it's made for hard targets so we'll fix that It also has a very thin handle, but that leather makes up for it, gives you a good grip on it. Feels very wieldable also, or maybe I'm just strong tonight more than I usually am. I don't know guys, I can't really move around in here, I'll end up knocking something off. Well, right, well, there are those two. I didn't go over to uh, Kasaki here, but it looks nice. Nice and ground in. I'm sure you've seen it on camera when I went by. And there's my two new additions. That is really, really tight in there. It's not falling out. Two new additions. And we will have to build another sort of rack, which I have no problem with gives me something to do. So all in all, I'm very pleased with them. And uh, until we get ready to uh, do some cutting, our power's out.